On July 4, 1910, Reno, Nevada became something more than just a blip on the map. On this day, Reno would be home to an event that would forever change the very course of race relations in the United States. And that event was a boxing match. It is perhaps the most important boxing match that ever took place. This was the fight where Jim Jeffries came out of retirement as the Great White Hope to beat Jack Johnson, who was the first black man ever to hold the title of world's heavyweight champion. Although Johnson was the king of the sporting world, he was still subject to the harsh realities of Jim Crow America. White people hated him so much that because of his style and his arrogance, flaunting of money and his connections with white women, that no black athlete was allowed to fight for the world's heavyweight championship until 22 years after Jack Johnson's championship. And being the heavyweight champion in 1910 was a lot more important than it is today. So when you were the world's heavyweight champion, you were the physical king of the world. You were the strongest man in the world. You were the best fighter. White people did not want a black man to be considered in those lofty terms. In fact, the unwritten rule in boxing during this time stated that no black man could ever fight for the heavyweight title. Johnson upset this ruling in 1908 by pressuring then-champion Tommy Burns into a title fight in Sydney, Australia. After beating Burns, the new champion became the target for many white Americans. In 1910, the great white hope, Jim Jeffries, would end his retirement and promise to bring the title back to the white race. But Jim Jeffries was, at this time, a farmer in, in Southern California in the San Joaquin Valley, and he, he weighed almost 300 pounds. So they got him to fight, but he had to lose 100 pounds in less than a year and then go in to fight a man who was vastly superior in strength, quickness, and in boxing moxie. Initially planned for San Francisco, California, the fight would soon need to find a new home. Political and social pressure forced Governor James Gillette to cancel the fight. The people of Reno, however, welcomed the fight with open arms. Reno got the fight because of its location. Back in 1910, Reno was on the route of the Transcontinental Railroad, which went from San Francisco to Chicago. In addition to the city's location, Reno also had a unique reputation that would bring in visitors from all over the globe. Gambling and divorce and prostitution, that was all part of the mix here in Reno. So fighting, you know, boxing, why not? Reno was able to secure the fight. Even still, many of the people in Reno would make sure that their views of Johnson were well known. The sports writers treated Jack Johnson like he should be treated, like a, a boxing superstar, which he was. But they would, you know, turn their stories into the editor, and the, the editors at the, at the Reno papers seemed very racist. They refer to Jack Johnson as a chocolate drop, an Ethiopian, a savage from Africa, which was total bullshit because the guy grew up in Galveston, Texas. Johnson was no stranger to this type of treatment. He knew that the only way that he was able to fight back was with his fists, something Johnson was very good at. Though the fight was scheduled for 45 rounds, Johnson was able to get the job done in 15. Following a series of lightning fast uppercuts and left hooks, Jeffries went down for the first time in his career. He would fall three separate times in the 15th round until finally the referee had seen enough. This was an all-white crowd, and when Tex Rickard raised Jack Johnson's hand as the victor, it was dead silence. In the hours following Johnson's victory, the country would explode into a series of race riots. Though no official number has ever been released, it is estimated that 26 individuals were killed from beatings, gunshots, and even lynchings. The legacy of the fight of the century is complicated. White superiority was dealt a metaphorical black eye in Reno. Yet the price for such a victory was drastically high. However, for a short period of time in the middle of the Nevada desert, the world witnessed the impossible. At the height of Jim Crow America, a black man was able to rise up 
and reign supreme.